Good morning. I'm Pastor Ashley Osborne, pastor at Valley of Peace Lutheran Church. Valley of Peace is an ELCA congregation located in Golden Valley, Minnesota. We are a reconciling in Christ church, which means we welcome and celebrate all people, and all people are welcome to participate in our life together. So thank you for being present this morning. Your presence, even as we gather online, enriches this time of worship, and we give thanks that God is present in and through all of us. I see several of you greeting one another, so I invite you to continue greeting one another on this beautiful Sunday, and I'll open our time together with a few announcements about our life as a church. The first is that next Sunday, Sunday, September 6, we'll have our service of Holy Communion immediately following worship. We log on using Zoom so that we can be gathered together as a community. Again, a reminder, you can access Zoom on your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, or by dialing in on your telephone as well. And we share in a brief service of Holy Communion. I ask that you have bread or crackers and wine or grape juice available. And then for the next two Wednesdays, so Wednesday, September 2nd, and Wednesday, September 9th, we are going to hope for good weather so that our Faith Uncorked prayer service can meet outside here at Valley of Peace near the lower level entrance. So at 7 p.m., bring your chair, bring a mat, wear a mask. We'll practice physical distancing, bring a Bible or something to follow along with, with scripture readings. And we'll gather together for a time of checking in with each other and praying with and for one another and for our world. So 7 p.m. September 2nd and 9th. And then looking ahead in just two weeks, Sunday, September 13th is our Rally Sunday. Now Rally Sunday will look a little bit different this year and you'll see more information coming out in the next couple of weeks about our drive-through Rally Sunday event taking place in the afternoon. But for you to know what Rally Sunday means, we'll be launching into fall programming as much as we can this year. So with our fall programming, worship on Rally Sunday will move to 1015. We'll have children's faith formation, adult faith formation. And then I'm very excited about a music opportunity for folks at Valley of Peace. Now, if you are a musician or a lover of music, which I know several of us are here at Valley of Peace, I want to share this announcement from Zach Carlson, our director of music, and an invitation to Wednesday evening gatherings. So that will launch after our rally Sunday, so the Wednesday following September 13th. And then that week, we also have our Habitat for Humanity week. So we're looking for eight volunteers a day. Information about this opportunity has been in our email communication. And so if you'd like to sign up or like more information on serving with Habitat for Humanity, please contact Paul Michelson. Our worship arts team has, invi has invited us this summer into a practice of arts for our own lives all around our Unraveled Art series. And so as we begin our time of worship, we begin by observing and looking at many of those images that help us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
please join with me in our call to worship. Gracious God, we bring you the broken parts of ourselves. Hem us in before and behind. Creator God, we bring you the joyful parts of ourselves. Unravel our doubt, weave faith into our hearts, draw us together and point us toward you. In hope and faith we pray, in hope and faith we worship. Amen. And now our prayer of confession. God, we confess we are loose ends. You give us the gift of community, and we weave walls of exclusion and isolation. You give us the gift of a new day, and we spend more time unraveling justice than sowing seeds of peace and unity. You give us the gift of holy surprises and unimaginable beauty, and we shut off our hearts and our blindfolded eyes. Forgive us for our frayed ends and self-centered hearts. Unravel the sin in us and replace it with love. Gratefully we pray. Amen. And now join with me in our prayer for illumination. God of unending surprises, this life is a tapestry of moments woven together, and we long to be weavers of love. Today we gather and pray that you would unravel our bias, unravel our assumptions, Unravel whatever it is that keeps us from you. And as you do, clear space in our hearts for your word. We are listening. We are praying. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. You, loving God, are the ground of our being and the river of life. You both steady our roots and draw them to seek the living waters. You are like the sunlight enticing us taller and like the breeze rustling our leaves. You are with us through hard seasons of summer heat and in the night when winter's frost ice the landscape. Your love warms and sustains us. You are everything to us. Let our gratitude be great. Let our praise be plentiful. Let our worship be wonderful. Amen. As we prepare to move into a time with our children, this morning in particular, we are going to have a blessing of our high school graduates. This morning in our worship service, we're moving from hearing stories of people whose lives were unraveled in scripture to making a space for us to name how our lives have become unraveled now. And I think especially of our high school graduates whose senior year became unraveled, who, whose graduation plans had to change, and whose future is in many ways still unknown. At Valley of Peace, we have a long history of celebrating our graduates, and so continue to hold our graduates in prayer as we receive, send this blessing with them and learn more about our high school graduates from Valley of Peace this year. This morning at Valley of Peace, we are delighted to recognize our high school graduates and celebrate another milestone event. It is our privilege to affirm these members of our congregation who have completed one phase of their lives and move on with great expectations.
Thank you to Emily Moravec, our Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries here at Valley of Peace for creating that video and prayers and peace for, to our high school graduates. All of the graduates were sent gift cards from Valley of Peace Lutheran Church, so thank you for your continued support. As we prepare for our scripture reading today, you're going to hear our scripture reading twice. One in spoken word as we turn to the book of Psalms and hear Psalms 1 and 2, but also sung as well, because many of the Psalms were meant to be sung as songs. And so as you hear the Psalms twice, I invite you to think about what words and phrases capture your attention as we receive the word of God this morning. The scripture reading for today is Psalm 1 and Psalm 2. Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire, and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder, and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath, and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. With trembling, kiss his feet, or he will be angry, and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and against the Lord's anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say, lest us cast off their bonds from us. God whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord holds them in derision. Then in wrath God speaks to them 
and in rage fills them with terror. As for me, I have anointed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear. And with trembling, bow in worship. Lest the Lord be angry and you perish in a sudden blaze of wrath. Happy are all who take refuge in God. I wanted to turn to the book of Psalms today because this is what we've been using for our Wednesday prayer services. And Psalms 1 and 2 are known as an introductory text to the entire book of Psalms. Psalms 1 and 2 do not have a title, and they both open with the word happy, which can also be interpreted blessed, and end with that word as well. And so many scholars believe that these Psalms introduce the entire book of Psalms. And so Psalms 1 and 2 provide a window or a lens into how we read the entire book of Psalms, that we are called to meditate on God's word, and that we name our hope in the messianic promise of peace and justice for all. Now Psalms 1 and 2 in particular talk about what it means to be faithful. We hear about what it means to be happy. We are encouraged to meditate on God's law, and then we know that we can take refuge in our God. Now as we think about how our lives have become unraveled in this time of pandemic and protest and unrest and canceled plans, We know that in Psalms, there are places where we can name our praise, our prayers, our our petitions, our griefs, our anger, and our lament. The Psalms are filled with a variety of ways that we can pray before God and that we can name our losses, our unravelings too. The Psalms are a reminder that there is a place for our voice. Now this week, I've invited congregation members to think about how they have experienced unraveling in this time. And I recently came across a video prepared by someone studying to be a rabbi in preparation for a Jewish holiday last month. And in this video, you'll see a variety of losses that this individual invited a whole variety of community members to name. And as you watch this video, I invite you to think about which losses speak to you and also perhaps which losses are unnamed that you would bring forward as well. Because I think losses are another way of naming what has come unraveled in our own life.
I don't know what spoke to you as you watched this video, what loss or pain or grief came out, or maybe what you thought was unnamed in this video as well. This video provides a space for people to name their own losses, their own unraveling. And it's a reminder that there is space, space in the Psalms and space in our own lives and in the church to name our unraveling. And so we are rooted in the Psalms, which is a reminder that we can pray and speak to God in a variety of ways. And as our Psalm ends today, we can take refuge in God, that God holds us in safe places. And often that safe place looks like this community. And so I want you to know that if you are feeling alone in this, please reach out to me. Know that you are valued and loved, especially in this community of faith. Let us now join together as we hold our unraveling moments before us in a time of music as we join together for our hymn of the day. As we gather separately and together in the spirit, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring for the church around the world, we pray for a spirit of ecumenical cooperation, for the health of congregations during this difficult time, for our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Seeing before us your good creation, we pray 
For the earth, as we face ramifications of climate change and natural disasters in so many parts of the world, we see over one million acres of California burning with wildfires. We see flash floods killing dozens in Afghanistan. We pray for those in the path of Hurricane Laura, and all of these evacuations in each of these cases are more challenging due to the coronavirus. And so we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Facing so many international prob problems, we pray for the strengthening of democracies, for peaceful resolutions to conflicts, for the peace of Belarus, Lebanon, and Yemen, for researchers seeking a vaccine, for our legislators to assist the lives of the poor, for an ethical election campaign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For healing in the United States, we pray. After months of civil unrest over police brutality and attacks on innocent black lives, we pray especially for Jacob Blake and his family. We pray for the lives of protesters who were killed and injured. God of justice, help us each to do our part as we seek to redeem the soul of the United States as it faces the sin of racism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Surrounded by people with great and hidden need, we pray for families frightened by the uncertain future, for those whose homes have burned down, for students deprived of effective education, for refugees and for prisoners. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Aware of all who are sick and suffering, we pray. For all who are facing the coronavirus, for those without medical care, and for those we remember now before you. And so let us take a moment to name petitions before God at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mindful of all who have gone before us in the faith, we offer our thanks. For all the saints famous and forgotten, for medical workers who have died of the virus, for friends and family we have loved, for the promise of everlasting life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus first taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This would be the time in our service where we would pause and receive an offering, giving thanks to God for all that God has first given us. And so I'd like to take this time to pause and give thanks for the many gifts that you continue to give to your loved ones, to the church, and to this community. I also want to invite you, if you are able to give a financial gift, you can still do so in three ways. You can mail in an offering to the church office. You can go to valleyofpeace.org to give online. And you can text to give, and you see that number here on the screen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the many gifts that you continue to give. And now may you receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's everlasting and almighty peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you.